Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our speed density tuning we're going to be doing with our ECM Link software. So if we want to ignore the mass airflow sensor, we're able to use just our map sensor for doing our tuning process. This gives us a lot more resolution. We have a three-dimensional table that's going to be based on load and engine RPM. That's going to represent the volumetric efficiency or the cylinder filling of our engine. That's going to be an indirect way to report the air mass. We're going to be going over all the details you need to know in order to tune your car properly using speed density. This is the preferred way to do your tuning if you're going to be making a lot of power and you're going to be exceeding the flow capabilities of the mass airflow sensor. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our speed density in our ECM Link software. We have a lot of things to cover. So let's start with the basics and talk about what we have here in our table, what the values represent, and let's talk about the setup and configuration to get our file ready for speed density. Then we can talk about doing the actual tuning process, reviewing a properly tuned file versus an improperly tuned file, taking a look at some data log examples so you know what to look for and exactly how to tune this properly. So first and foremost, looking at our table here, this is a three-dimensional table that's gonna let us represent our air mass at any given uh, load based on our map sensor reading and engine RPM. So in the previous video, we were taking a look at our math comp up in this table here. This was just a two-dimensional table and we found that with the mass airflow sensor, we'd have a certain amount of frequency registration from the sensor. It would have a certain amount of air mass associated with that in that situation. It would then uh, tell us how much fuel mass to deliver. So we have our equation, fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. In this table here, it's gonna be abiding by the same thing, except our air mass registration is gonna be here a calculated amount. So we're not gonna be registering it from a mass airflow sensor, that's gonna be coming from the table here. So the values we place in the table are gonna be very important, they're correct, so that we have everything fall in line, so we're representing the air mass properly, and therefore we're getting the proper amount of fuel mass converted into an ejector pulse width and hitting the air fuel that we'd like. So what we'll find is the values in the table are gonna be a percentage of cylinder filling or the percentage of volumetric efficiency. So the values will range here from zero all the way to a peak value of about 128 or 129. Now what we'll find, the values in this table are actually represented uh, pretty accurately. So at idle and part throttle, this will be our idle area of operation in this range right here, we'll have values between 40 to 50. Part throttle will have values here between 55 to 65. And then as we transition up into our higher loads, into boost, we'll find the values here should go to about 100 to maybe about 110 at the most. Now, the values in this table are, again, represented very, very well. We'll take a look at the associated data log a little bit later so we understand why these values are, values are actually accurate and some things we need to pay attention to. So when we're doing our tuning, essentially, if we turn our values down here, it'll report the air mass less Therefore, the fuel mass will be less, and therefore the injector pulse width will drop. If we increase our values, we'll be reporting more air mass, driving up the fuel mass, driving up the injector pulse width. So we can essentially look at the table as a very simplistic way to increase or decrease our fuel. Now we want to be a little bit more specific than that. We want our values in here to actually represent, again, that cylinder filling and the air mass. So We'll find here at the top we have our engine displacement. This has to be filled up properly based on the displacement engine you're working with. If we have a 2 liter or if we have a 2.3 liter, the difference between the displacement will have completely different cylinder filling. So a volumetric efficiency here of 50% on a 2 liter, that's going to be assuming 50% air mass flow or theoretical flow into the engine. That's going to be different for 50% on a 2.3 liter. So we need to represent that or will under or over represent the air mass, again, coming from the values from the table. So this parameter has to be filled out. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.